Good evening and welcome to another of the St Lawrence Thursday evening videos. This evening I'm going to talk about next Sunday's epistle. It comes from the letter of St Paul to the Philippian Christians. Now the greatest danger that any human organisation faces is disunity. It's as much a danger to us in the days of Covid as it was to the church at the time of St Paul. Those who hold strong convictions may find it very difficult to work with others who hold equally strong but perhaps different convictions. Listen to the first five verses of chapter 2. If in Christ there's anything that will move you, any incentive in love, any fellowship in the spirit, any warmth or sympathy, I appeal to you. Make my joy complete by being of a single mind, one in love, one in heart, and one in mind. Nothing's to be done out of jealousy or vanity. Instead, out of humility of mind, everyone should give preference to others. Everyone pursuing not selfish interests, but those of others. Make your own the mind of Christ Jesus. What are the threats to unity? Personal ambitions that lead to competitive behaviour. And these, says St Paul, must give way to a striving for a common mind, a common purpose and common loving action. Then there's conceit and desire for personal aggrandizement. These must be banished in favour of self-effacement. Good deeds are to glorify and focus attention on God rather than the individual who performs them. Thirdly, no one should think of themselves first as this leads to a desire to push people down rather than to help them up. We've all been baptism, baptized into Christ and if we're individually united with Christ, how can we be at odds with others of his brothers and sisters. Christian love is the driving force of the Christian way of life. A fierce determination to love God and others, even those who hate us, is a powerful force for unity. Share the Holy Spirit which binds us to God and to one another. The Spirit is another powerful driver of unity and enables a life of self-giving love. Paul also puts out a personal appeal. Unity in the Philippian church would be a cause for great joy to him. Commentators tell us that the rest of our text is part of an early Christian hymn, which Paul quotes to support his argument for unity. The Philippians should follow the example of Christ, whose life was essentially a life of humble and selfless service. Listen to verse 6.
make your own the mind of Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not count equality with God something to be grasped. Jesus Christ was divine by nature. He was as godly as God the Father. And from the moment of his begetting, ever remained so. He didn't need to grasp or snatch equality away from God. He was already divine. A divine nature, the trappings of which he was prepared not to use, not to grasp to himself. Verses 7 and 8. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, becoming as human beings are. And being in every way like a human being, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death on a cross. Jesus wasn't like a, a Greek god who would sometimes take human form but always retained and used his exalted status and godly powers. Jesus really did become human, as human as any other human being living out a life of humble love and service. Service to God, service to his fellow human beings. Even preparing to die rather than exert his divine authority over others. Verses 9 to 11. And for this, God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus. And every tongue should acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus rejected the use of his divine authority to, domi to dominate humanity into cowering service. He rejected that for a life of self-giving love, love that inspires a response of love from his fellow men and women. Or as the hymn writer puts it, love so amazing, so divine, demands my life, my soul, my all. This life of humble service and of self-sacrifice also brought God's approval. God gave Jesus not only glory, but a new name, Kurios, or Lord which originally meant master or owner, if we translate it from the Greek. Later, Kurios became a title used by Roman emperors and even heathen gods. Then the translators of the Hebrew Bible into Greek used the same words for the Hebrew God instead of Yahweh or Jehovah they inserted Kurios Lord Master into their name their Bible their name for God
But that's been repeated in the Christian scriptures. For Christians, Jesus is the divine master, the owner of all that exists. And one day, all creation will acknowledge this. So the end of the passage returns us to where we set out in the first place. All creation will acknowledge Jesus as Lord, but the aim of Jesus isn't personal adulation, but to point the glory to the Supreme Father. If Jesus draws all creation to himself, it's so that he may present everything to the one who subjected all things to him. Paul pleads with those in the Philippian church who were gratuitously selfish, seeking prominence, preeminence and power over others for themselves. Look again at the life of Jesus. Give up your craving to be the centre of attention, the centre of power. Follow the humble example of Jesus and divert the attention of others to where it is rightly due. God. Now let's say a prayer. God, give us wisdom and courage that our faith may not become a selfish thing kept for ourselves alone, but may be true faith in Jesus, that we may live like him, open to life from many directions. We pray for all who rely on us for support, for guidance, for faith. We pray for those in need, our health in their sickness, our strength in their weakness, our wealth in their poverty, our love in their confusion, our faith in their fear. God, give us strength to be there humbly for those who need us. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Master. Amen.